So here we are. I've just started my row a little bit and now let's see how we work this stitch. So first of all we're going to be working this stitch in our contrast colour yarn. I like to use a really nice variegated yarn because it produces these lovely sort of mixes of colour that you see underneath. So first of all the first stitch is simply a slip stitch and that slip stitch should be at the centre of the previous star in the row below. Then we're going to work five stitches and we're going to work them like a knit stitch except all we're going to do is wrap the yarn twice around the needle like so. So you get these two loops. That's just one stitch but two loops and we're going to do that five times. And what you can see is that this slip stitch from the row below in the middle here forms the centre stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and this third stitch which is the middle is directly above this slip stitch. So I always like to check my work as I go along just briefly that I've got everything in the right place because it's, it's kind of frustrating to get to the end of the row and find out that everything's offset. So next we want to slip one stitch without working it, carry the yarn reasonably loosely around the back, you don't want to over tighten it otherwise you're going to cinch your work and then simply work five stitches wrapping your yarn twice around the needle. Remember when you count them they're going to look like little doublets so one, two, three, four, five. So the next one's a slip stitch. As I do that, I eye it that it's in the middle here. And then again, work uh, five double wrapped stitches. So there we go. And one, two, number three is directly above the slip stitch, four, five. It's as simple as that. So you end up with uh, a row with these little doublets for each stitch. So it's worth bearing in mind that when you're working this stitch you do need a needle that's long enough to accommodate these double wraps. Okay so I'm going to work to the end of my row here and then I'm going to join you for the wrong side row. So here I am, I'm on the wrong side of my work now and I'm going to show you how to work the wrong side of this stitch. We're only working with our coloured yarn, so when we come across a main colour stitch we're just going to slip that stitch purlwise. On this row too we also want to have a yarn over in our coloured yarn to go with this slip stitch because on row three we're going to be working those together as you'll see and the reason we do that is to a keep the back of our work nice and tidy but also to add a little bit of extra yarn into our aster stitch. There's a bit of a tendency to work this stitch rather tightly so make a conscious effort not to over tighten your working yarn. So using your right needle tip slip into your stitch purlwise, not both loops, just the extra loop, and pull the extra loops off the needle to make your five elongated stitches. Then insert your left needle back through all five stitches, make sure you've got all five, make sure you haven't sneakily picked up that yarn over as well, so make sure you've got all five but only five loops, and then Insert your, your right needle will be already in the place for purling. So make it a stitch as if to purl, but don't drop your five stitches off your needle yet. Then work a yarn over, not too tightly. Don't remember to not pull too much on this working yarn. Then go back into your five stitches and work a purl and go back round for a yarn over and go back into your stitches for a purl. So purl one, 
yarn over, purl one, yarn over, purl one. And what that does is to create five stitches where you had five stitches bunched together. So slip your main colour stitch, don't forget your yarn over, and then you want to slip your stitches purlwise to drop the extra wraps. Get your needles in position as if you're going to be purling those stitches and then just treat all five strands as if they're a single stitch working into them all together. So, oh, drop the yarn there. Purl one, pull your loop through, let it have a little bit of yarn, yarn over, purl, yarn over, purl. And you get five stitches from your five stitches. So we don't, our stitch count isn't changing essentially. So slip your main colour stitch and yarn over, drop your wraps, and then work all five stitches together. Do check you've got five, and then purl, and allow this yarn to just pull up a little bit. Okay, you don't want to be working too tightly in like this. So just allow it to come up a little bit. You don't want it all loose, you don't want it all out here either. But just allow it to be nice and relaxed. And then yarn over, purl, yarn over, purl. And do make sure as you go that you've got all five stitches and you've made five stitches. So I'm going to continue now working across my row, making my little clusters of five and five, and I will meet you, oops, I will meet you back at the beginning of the round and, oh, not the round, it's the row. I'll meet you back at the beginning and uh, then we will work row three so I can show you how to complete this stitch and to check that all of your work is nicely aligned to give those pretty little sort of spiral flowers. So I'll see you at the beginning of the row. So here we are on row three of our Asta stitch pattern and we're going to be working now in our main colour yarn so we've left our coloured yarn behind and we're just going to work across all the stitches knitting them. I just want to start by showing you one of the Asta stitches from the row below just so you know what it's you expect it to look like. So what you've got is these strands of yarn that splay out in this nice little sort of uh, pattern and what you can see is that they're nice and separate and that they all go into the centre of the stitch here. And that's because we need to work our stitches in the correct order. Most of the time that happens quite naturally just because the stitches are in the correct order on the needles. But sometimes because of the nature of the pattern they do bunch up a little bit. So I'm just going to go through slowly and show you how it should look if it's working correctly and also how it might look if it goes wrong. And just keep an eye as you work your stitches. So I'm going to work the first stitch and what I want you to notice about this first stitch is that if I pull it to the side here you can see that it's coming directly out of that hole and across the front of the work. So you can see right down to the base of that stitch. That's stitch number one. Then the second stitch, what you'll notice immediately compared to the other one, is that this is coming from the rear of the stitch. Okay, This one you can see going to the hole, this one you can't, and that's because it's at the back of the work. So that's your yarn over, that's where it should be. So the next stitch should be at the front of the work, and you can see again going straight into the hole that we created. And then the next stitch should be at the back of the work. Now these two stitches, as is often the case, just because we've been moving along the needles, they've got a bit out of order. So if I pull this one, you can see it's not very free. It's a bit awkward. And it seems to be coming 
out of the front and then there's this stitch here. So they've actually got in the wrong order. So what's happened is they've just crossed over. So just uncross them and then what you'll see is the stitches are nice and free and easy to get hold of. And that the next one, as it should do, comes from the back of the work. So you knit that one and then the final stitch. And then if you take a quick look, you'll see that you've got those nice strands and they're not all crossed over and muddled up. When you get to your main colour stitch, remember the yarn over that we put in on our row two. We're going to work the yarn over in the coloured yarn and that main colour stitch together. And that just hoops up our yarn. You can sit here on the previous stitch and keeps the carried yarn out of the way so the back's nice and clear and it's tidy from the front. So let's work another bunch of uh, five Aster stitches here. So let's start and you can see that comes from the middle of the stitch, from the back of the stitch, from the middle of the stitch, from the back of the stitch, and from the front of the stitch. Okay, middle, front, I'm using those interchangeably, but they're coming out of the front edge of the work. Then work our main stitch and our yarn over together again, and then start working your aster stitch. Now you can work at normal tension on this row three. You don't want it particularly loose or tight, just, just your normal tension. Remember we were a little bit loose when we were working our row two of the coloured stitch. Not too loose, just a little bit. So work your main colour and your coloured yarn over together and then your five stitches. And again, just keep an eye as you work the stitches that you're going from what I call front of the stitch, back of the... Oh, I've gone through the wrong way there. Back of the stitch, front of the stitch. And just do a very quick check, visual check, that they're nice uh, parallel strands there. So I'm going to work one and show you what it looks like um, when you have got the stitches out of order. Usually it happens at the end, it can happen anywhere, but I'm going to deliberately now cross these over and I'm going to deliberately work them, despite the fact that it actually becomes quite difficult to work them if they're out of order, it becomes a bit unwieldy. Then what you'll see is that at the beginning of the stitch you've got these nice strands but at the end of the stitch you've got this kind of weird one stitch here and then there's apparently another stitch coming out of it. It's not the end of the world if you if you do it and you you miss it because you haven't checked it um, but really for the tidiest look you want to just visually check as you go. So then all I do if I do go wrong is to slip the stitches off the needle there and make it so that you have stitch number four from the back and stitch number five coming from the front. And then when you work them, you'll see all of the strands are really tidy coming out from the centre of the stitch. So let's work that just one last time. So stitch one which will lie at the front of the work. Stitch two will come from behind your loops. Stitch three from the front. Stitch four from behind. And stitch five from in front. Hoping I'm managing to stay on camera as I do that. It's a little bit tricky when I'm so close up. I can feel already that I've got these last two stitches aren't in the right order. They look a bit weird as well because you've got this funny looping going on. So just pull those into the right order. And once you do, they're so much easier to work than if they're tangled up that um, it's fairly easy to spot when they have got in the wrong order. So uh, that's the row three of our Aster Stitch worked. 
So our two coloured rows and then our finishing off row. And then that's it, you can just work in your garter stitch pattern until you're ready to do another Aster Stitch row. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and you found it really helpful. Uh, my, I lost quite a few of my patterns use this little Aster Stitch, including the Jewel Shawls, Secrets and Storms, um, and Secret and Storm Cowl. So if you want to have a look at any of those patterns, you can look at the link below. Please also consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.